1,033 dedicated episodes, including a bunch of part ones, part twos, and part threes. So welcome. If you're a brand new listener, congratulations on your excellent decision-making skills. Today, we're going to talk about dealing with survivor's guilt, and we have a special treat for you freaks. We're going to give you a preview of the brand new, uh, it's a brand new show that we're doing. It's dedicated to church security and protecting houses of worship and defending the faithful. It's called Legion of Michael, and we're going to give you guys a sneak preview at the end of this show. So there you have it. Zach's going to play the music, and we're going to get into it. Stand by for education, enlightenment, enjoyment, and entertainment. He's not here to talk about your feelings. He's not here to say what you want to hear. He's here to say what needs to be said. Ladies and gentlemen and children of all ages, please welcome your host, the pimp hand of America, Professor Paul Markle. Yes, indeed, it is I, the pimp hand of America. I am not here to say what you want to hear. I am here to say what needs to be said. Yes. yes. Normally we do a QA. and uh, a We may or may not get to Q's and A's today. I'm not sure how much time we've got. But uh, I wanted to share a story with you guys. Now, this, this is going into our Warrior of the Week. And this is something I, I know a lot of veterans, a lot of, a lot of old core veterans like myself. And uh, based on what I'm doing lately, I know a lot of younger veterans uh, who've been involved in GWAT. Of course, people who've been involved in GWAT aren't necessarily young. Uh, <laughs> the guys that were went into Iraq and Afghanistan in 03 and 02 and 03 are not exactly young guys anymore. It's been 20 years. 20 years! Shouldn't we have won by now? Uh, and yeah, I know, you'd think. Uh, 20 years, you Look back at the history of the United States, Jared, only 240 years. How many 20-year wars did we engage in? Zero. Well, yeah. one. One. The current one, and then we had a Cold War that went on for about 30-some years or 40 years. But, uh, whew, um, All right, uh, Zach, you can go ahead and play the Word of the Week music, and then I'm just going to go ahead and get into it. <laughs> Yes, indeed. If you guys are wondering what happened to SWAT fuel, I'm going to tell you what happened to SWAT fuel. The, the American Democrat Party and liberalism and cowards uh, screwed them over in 2020. That's what happened. Uh, their plant was in the state that was deemed by the governor to be a non-essential state. Because if you're manufacturing multivitamins during a, a health care crisis, during a pandemic, your multivitamins are not essential. Yeah, and this is when you scratch your head and you say, what? You mean, don't they want people to be generally healthy? No, they don't want people to be generally healthy. They want people to hide, to submit, and to take their vaccine. Wouldn't it be better if people were just healthy and had a strong immune system? Hey, get that guy out of here. Take him to room 101 so he can get his head right. Him up against the wall. Get him up against the wall. He don't look right. <laughs> that one in the spotlight. He don't look right. Get him up against the wall. Only a few of my, few of my listeners are going to get that. But those who get it just got a little smile on their face. All right. Warrior of the week. Oh. Uh, I've been, this is a uh, kind of a generic question, uh, but I've, I've talked to people about this and, and essentially the, the subject goes, I've been feeling survival, survivor's guilt. Do you have any suggestions? And all right, so what is survivor's guilt? Uh, survivor's guilt can happen anytime uh, plane crashes or car crashes or whatever. There's a, you know, a plane crash and half the people on board die and half people don't. Um, car crashes, you know, one passenger survives and the rest of the passengers don't. 
But most of the time, when you're we're talking about uh, survivors' guilt or dealing with survivors' guilt, it, it's military veterans who've been in combat and have lost their friends and brothers, uh, and then they get to come back. They get to come back, and their their brothers come back, but not the same way. They come back in body bags and coffins and flag draped coffins, and it's a very very real phenomena has well it's existed i would say since the entire i would i would safely say that this feeling or this this problem this situation has been in existence the entire existence of mankind uh because well if you go back to biblical times or ancient greek times or whatever uh men have been engaging in warfare with each other and some people survive and some people don't. Some people get to go home uh, to Athens and Sparta and some people don't. Uh, and I had personally, I had that exact same, I had to deal with that when I was involved in the first Gulf War. Of course, we didn't know. We didn't know that it was gonna be Gulf War part one you know, it's kind of like the guys that were in World War One, and they're over there fighting in Germany and France, and they're like, hey, we're in the Great War. This is the big one. And if somebody would have come from the future and say, oh, no, this is just actually the precursor. <laughs> this is <laughs> this is the pre-roll. We're going to have another one here later, but you're just in, you're in one. It, it, I, I find it funny how people say, well, like the guys who came back and when they in 1918, they had parades. They're like, why didn't they refer to it as World War One? Because they didn't know. <laughs> because they didn't know about two yet. <laughs> in the newspapers in 1918, it didn't say, hey, we won World War One. <laughs> like, we won the Great War. But when I came back from Gulf War Part One, uh, I came back and uh, well, I survived, obviously. And you say, well, duh, most of them survived, but not everybody did. Uh, a friend of mine died in Kuwait, and he was in my team, or my, co my company. He was in my platoon. And my friend's name was Tommy, and he, he had a young, he was married, a young, had a young wife, and when we deployed to go overseas, uh, we were already deployed when the Persian Gulf War started. So we went from our Okinawa deployment. We were on deployment to Okinawa as part of a normal six-month deployment. That's what Marines do. They deploy for six months at a time all over the world. So we were already on our deployment, and we were supposed to be home in December or January, something like that. Well, Tommy's wife was pregnant when we deployed, and his son was born while we were deployed when we were in the desert and i remember sitting down with him during some quiet time and him showing me pictures you know of his newborn son and and telling me about it and talking about his wife and, and so on and so forth and well he got killed in in kuwait and never got to hold his son now i i was single oh uh, during that time didn't have a wife uh you know and when i we and you know, we left i got back home and i and i had this nagging feeling in my guts it's like you know god if you needed if you needed one if you needed a soul you could have taken me because i didn't have a wife i didn't have a son waiting at home for me but he didn't because and it's not it's not our choice. <laughs> Obviously, we don't get to make that choice. Uh, God has a greater plan for all of us. And Tommy was a faithful man. He was an honorable man. And, uh, you know, I, I ended up get, did get married, obviously, and did have children. Obviously, you know some of them. Uh, but uh, I had conversations with, with Nancy, my young wife, and, you know, every once in a while I would talk to her about it. And she said, why don't you why don't you write her letter his wife you know, and his, his son was you know young like toddler pre-kindergarten stage so in 1994 after 
feeling this, you know, survivor's guilt uh, for a while, I sat down. And back in the old days, kids, you guys might not know this, but what we would do is we would take this this writing stick, and it had black liquid inside of it, and we would take some dead tree, and it was flat and white, and uh, I wrote, well, I wrote her a letter, and uh, I, I went through my photographs. I had some some photos, not on my phone. I actually had these these things that you got in an envelope from Walmart. <laughs> And you went to the freeze frame and got them printed. Yeah. I, so I, uh, I wrote the letter, told her about my, and I told her how, how proud he was of her and how he, he knew she was a strong woman and how he never worried about her while he was deployed because he knew she was a strong, confident woman and she could take care of herself. And Anyway, I, I, I wrote my feelings and, and, and what I knew about Tommy and, and so forth. And, and I, put it, I put it in an envelope and I sent it away in 1994. And it, and it made me feel better. It did. It, it, made, me, it made me feel better because I finally put all that down on paper and, and communicated with her. And, I, you know, I, he had a lot of friends and, and I wasn't the only one. And I wasn't his probably his best friend, but we were friends. And I sent it off to her. And that was, that was 94. So I haven't thought about it a lot lately. I mean, kids grow up, you do things, you move around. And so, well, a few days ago, thanks to the miracle of technology, I, uh, I get a Facebook message, messenger thing pops up and it says, Hey, are you the Paul Markle that served with my dad, Tommy in Gulf war? And I said, yeah. <laughs> like hello ghost hello <laughs> ghost from the past um you know so and he said uh so he, he wrote me back and he said i wanted you to know that i just got i was just given a whole bunch of my dad's things and i went through those and i found this letter that you wrote to my mom in 1984 1994 and i and i read it and I wanted you to know that I appreciated you sending it. Oh, holy crap. For those of you that don't math well, that was 27 years ago. So what I'm here to tell you guys is this. I know that, you know, this doesn't apply directly to all of you, but I bet you that many of you out there in my audience have brothers, uh, fathers, uncles, cousins, whatever people, you know, people that, uh, have been in combat, have been overseas and have lost people have lost their friends and they come home, they get to come home and there's, and they're glad. Don't get me wrong. You're glad to be alive. You know, when you don't die, uh, you're glad to be alive when bomb bombs and artillery shells and things explode around you, but you didn't die. It make you're happy about that. Trust me. Uh, but at the same time, after everything calms down, you, you go through this, like, why them and not me, you know, uh, and you feel that now there's lots of different ways to deal with this. The best way actually is to commune with other guys that, to, to minister to your, your brothers, to have funeral games for them. Yeah. To have funeral games for them. Uh, and the reason that I'm sharing this story with you guys is because you need to understand that you're going to feel that it's natural. It doesn't make you crazy. You know, you don't have to let the shrink put you on medicine, but you don't need the, you don't need the shrink to put you on medicine. The wizard, you don't need him to freaking give you some kind of weird psycho freaking eval. It's hundred percent natural. Every survivor of combat throughout history has had to deal with this. You're not the first one and you won't be the last but you have to deal with it. Another thing that I want to mention or make make the point of is you don't know what the future holds. You don't know what God has in store for you. It's easy to question our maker and say, why them and not me? You know, I don't understand. This isn't fair. 
you know, and and I felt that way for a long time. I was like, why him? Why did he, he had so much to go home to? And I mean, I had parents and brothers and sisters and stuff, but but I didn't have a wife and children that were relying on me. Why? And the answer is, it's not for you to ask why, because you can't. You don't know. You don't see the big picture, and you don't know know what God's got in store for you, and you don't know what the future may hold, and you don't know what your wor- the how your words and your actions may benefit others. And it was extremely gratifying for me to know that even after, you know, 27 years, that the words that 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 letter survived. Seriously, I mean, think about that. Yeah, oh, pretty amazing. That that that, you know, this, that Tommy's son was able to go into this box of his dad's stuff and pull out an, an envelope that was 27 years old with a letter in it and read that. And my words were able to reach him. <laughs> They've been floating out there. Now, I'm, obviously, I'm sure, I mean, obviously his mother originally read it. Was, it was, yeah, I would say it was important enough for her to keep, so. Yeah, his mother read it, but but it wasn't given to him for 27 years. That's so, why we write letters in pen and not pencil or crayon. Yeah, <laughs> that's why we, we take the, the, this this ink stick and write on dead tree so that it stays. Oh, uh, so what I'm telling you guys out there and, and, and any of you who might be dealing with this or potentially dealing with it or know people that are, uh, is you don't know what's in store for you. It, things can seem pretty dark and pretty cloudy and pretty, and pretty depressing, but you got to, talk with other people, do what you need to do. If you need to write letters, write letters. Actually, there's there's a, a super cathartic uh, method to or feeling to writing letters. I don't know if that's the correct verbiage, but uh, when you write when you write your feelings down, it's very cathartic. It's very useful, it's very helpful. Um so when when and this just like I said, I had no idea that this was going to happen. I hadn't thought about that for years and years and years. Uh, you know, it, I mean, I, every, every Memorial Day generally, I I think about my service and I think about the the guys that I knew uh, who were in and who aren't here anymore. Um, but yeah, and I I thought, well, God probably wants me to share this story. Oh, uh, so that's what I'm doing for you guys. You you just don't know. You, you don't just know hit, you hit the entire audience in the feels. Yeah, I don't I don't know who you're going to uh, affect positively and you might think, well, you know, what's the point of me being here? You know, am am I actually doing anything good? Should I have should I have gone, you know, should I have perished on that battlefield years ago or not? Uh, but you just don't know. And that's something that's actually a really good point to talk about is that questioning like what you're doing in life just in general. It's like, why why am I here? Am I doing the right thing? Is what I'm doing actually affecting the world in a positive manner? And the world being your immediate surroundings and then when obviously the um, like the people that you immediately influence and then obviously just people that don't even know you. And so it's important to ask yourself that from time to time. Don't just get comfortable in a routine and then go and and just wake up and have groundhog day every single day Hmm. sometimes you need to say am i doing the right thing why am i doing this and maybe you don't need to understand it like dad said he's you don't need to understand why you're doing the thing that you're doing or why something happened to you because it's in god's plan and you'll understand it at some point in time but it's important to sit down and have that introspective conversation with yourself and I think that the philosophers of of uh, years past used to do that often. And I think that with technology being a an easy distraction for us to pick up our phone and and flip through Instagram or Facebook or or Parlor or Clubhouse or whatever it is, that it's easier for us not to have that conversation. Yeah. So there you go, guys. That is your I don't know whatever 
inspiration. Um, take, do with it what you will. Do with it what you will. Jericho, why? Because Cut. life is too short to have an ugly gun. That's right. Life is too short to have an ugly gun. You don't want to have one. I don't want to have one. Just, just don't do it, man. Go to DuracoatFirearmFinishes.com, and they can help you with all of your gun, knife, ammo can, mailbox, whatever. You know, maybe you just want to do the gas tank on your on your freaking motorcycle. They can help you. They can help you. DuracoatFirearmFinishes.com. Crossbreed Holsters want you to be what? What do they want you to be? Dangerous down. on demand. Dangerous on demand. Not they want down you to be. Sickness. But they want you to be part of the DOD. Is that what it down is? with the sickness? They want you to be dangerous on demand. And uh, you can be dangerous on demand when you go to Crossbreed Holsters. Get a good, high quality, comfortable, easy to wear, easy to carry. It's always there. Holster from them. And use the promotional code SOTG18. That's S O T G18. You'll save money. You'll be a happy camper and you'll be dangerous on demand, which is a good thing. All right. Brownells at brownells.com. They've got everything you need to go in, on, and around your gun. If they don't have it, it's because everyone else in the world is also out of stock, but they have this little gray button called that says notify me on it. So take advantage of it. And sign up for their newsletter. You know what, Jared? I just got a text on Monday. What? Text 556-223. Yeah. Dude. Oh, I did too, actually. Yeah. And, yeah. and it said, hey, this stuff's in stock. We got parts in stock. It was it was AR barrels. They had barrels in stock and receivers and frames and stuff. So, And they uh, were gracious. They said within 24 hours, like you probably have about 24 hours. And I'm thinking... Uh, you probably have like an hour or two, maybe. <laughs> like twenty-four hours is pretty optimistic. Mm. So go to brownells.com, sign up, and you won't be uh, you won't regret it. All right, it's Monday, so uh, we've got something for you guys, especially if you're a brand new listener. So perk up your ears. Attention, new listeners. We produced a complimentary online training course called Seven Training Tips That Could Save Your Life. Get instant access by joining the Student Lounge for free at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch Student of the Gun TV, read the blog, and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of these questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. All right. Do that. Go to studentofthegun.com. We have a quick question from, quick question. and you might have addressed this. I don't know how long ago it was asked, but Billy Bradshaw on Facebook says, so what does one do to make it stop and not self-destruct? Because that's what happened to me. And even today, some 50 years later, it haunts me really reliving that day over and over. Yeah, it's tough. It's difficult. Um, the best thing to do is to, is to minister to other guys. Uh, and if, if you are an older veteran, I would absolutely suggest that you get yourself to the wherever VFW or, or American Legion, or I don't even know if these young guys go there anymore, but reach out to these younger guys who are in their twenties, who are dealing with the same thing and talk to them because a lot of them feel like they're alone. A lot of them feel like th that, that it's just them. Like there's something wrong with me. Everybody else is good, and I'm all over, I'm over here all screwed up. Nope, it's that's not it at all. Um, there's lots of it, and, and when you share with other people, I, I know you know I, I've had people tell me, you know, they, they, their personal stories. I thought, wow, I thought I was the only one dealing with that. I thought I was the only one. No, you're not. You're not the only one. And uh, it also helps to write it down. It absolutely helps to write it down. All right, as promised, we're going to give you guys a sneak preview of the new show. It's a, it's a brand new product that we have created, and it's called the Legion of Michael podcast. And those of you who know, you're like, Legion of Michael, that sounds just like the church security uh, program that you did and the book that you wrote. There's a reason for that. So uh, what Zach's going to do is he's going to take us a, uh, a sneak preview of the Legion of Michael and drop it in for you guys right now.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you appreciated that. I hope you enjoyed today's show. Thank you very much for subscribing and liking and starring and hearting and thumbing up and whatever it is you do. You know, I'm not sure what platform you know you might be on. There's this thing called Radio Public now. I didn't even know about that. So I know about Stitcher and iHeartRadio. And so give us a thumb, give us a, a heart, give us a whatever, and let other people know. And remember, you're a beginner once. You're a student for life. We appreciate your reviews. If you haven't left a review or updated yours recently, head on over to Facebook, iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, or your favorite podcast player to voice your opinion. Don't forget to join us at The Student Lounge, a place for like-minded individuals to learn, connect, and support each other. No chicanery will be tolerated. Remember to check studentofthegun.com daily for new, free content and giveaways. Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at studentofthegun.com. Are you a social butterfly? Connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for new content each and every day at Student of the Gun. Watch Student of the Gun TV and videos from our trusted partners on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Chromecast, and even AirPlay. Go to studentofthegun.com for direct links, and remember, you're a beginner once, a student for life. All right. There we go. It's a good episode. Good. You know, your grandfather had to deal with that. Your grandpa McClellan. Oh, yeah. And he wrote a short piece called The Ghosts of the Arizona. Do we have that somewhere? Oh, yeah. It's right there. I've got it. Do you have that book of stuff that, that grandma... Um... Okay. Everything that grandpa Can you make wrote? a copy of that for me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I've been wanting yeah, I've to got read it. it. Everything I just, he wrote. There's only one of them. Yeah. Is it digitized? No. Yeah. Will you make a copy for me and I'll digitize that stuff? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, all right. We, we, we can go ahead and knock out this, uh, this 1034. <laughs> 1034. <laughs> That's funny. All right. One second. Zach, was water right as we... As that was we... Jared. His pipes are downstairs above his head. Oh, that was you. you Alex flushed the toilet, and we heard. I heard the uh, water. I think that was the shower. Oh. You okay. heard that? Yeah. Okay, I didn't know that you could hear that. Yeah, yeah oh, I yeah. heard the water running. Yeah, she's been taking a shower for a while. It must have been because... I don't know. That's weird. Maybe because I wasn't talking. Yeah, maybe. Huh. You guys have the... Uh, uh, is it fixed, or is it one of the handheld wand things? Uh, fixed okay all right ready no what yes no i don't care uh yeah one second all right uh all right yeah we're ready so dad let me write down the beginning time you can go start us off uh when you're ready All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Wednesday's episode. Wednesday's episode of Student of the Gun Radio. I hope that a lot of you guys are fresh, brand new listeners, and I know that many of you are veterans. So there you go. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, today, talk about pop music. We're going to talk about emergency and survival gear because that's kind of an important topic. Uh, and we're also going to talk about something toys or training. What is more important? right now what's more important in our world today toys buying toys or training well if you look at canada toys, <laughs> you toys can't are pretty buy important. toys anymore yeah yeah so uh we've got brown Hills bullet points and a crossbreed holsters homeroom for you all that on today's episode of student of the gun radio stand by for education enlightenment enjoyment and entertainment He's not here to talk about your feelings. He's not here to say what you want to hear. He's here to say what needs to be said. Ladies and gentlemen and children of all ages, please welcome your host, the pimp hand of America, Professor Paul Markle. 
Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I am firmly ensconced behind the black carbon steel microphone. The black carbon steel microphone. So what are we going to speak of today? Well, if you've got any cues, uh, we might be able to fish out some A's for you. So drop them in the comments, either on uh, the Facebook or the uh, Discord or YouTube or whatever, and the boys will monitor those. As we always do on Wednesday, we've got a Brownells bullet points for you, and we're going to continue with our theme. And I think this is something that uh, will help all of you freaks and freakettes. So uh, play the play the Brownells music, Zach, please. <laughs> All right. Last week, last Wednesday, we talked about water storage. And you guys, if you go to brownells.com over on the, it's the, the far right stage left, there's a button that says emergency and survival gear. And they actually, wow, I just clicked on it. Maybe it's because of my previous history, but the very first product is the water bricks on my screen here nice i wonder if you guys out there in the audience have been searching those out and buying them and that popped it up to the top of the emergency and survival gear you think that's a likely story it could be it could be because it it's the first one on mine too so it must yeah be, must be in they noticed that it's the most searched thing or something most popular yeah. so last week we talked about water storage bulk water storage we talked about being a cool guy and if you're going to make a run for barrels before you do that to talk to your neighbors and say hey man i'm this is what i'm going to do do you want one or don't you because i'm going to get them and i'm not making two trips <laughs> and your neighbor's like i don't need that i'm not stupid and paranoid like you i have a faucet okay when you're drinking your pee then uh don't don't come to me <laughs> When you're drinking out of puddles, don't come to me. So what are we going to talk about this week when it comes to emergency and survival gear? Nutrition. Your body needs water. Check. We all understand that. You need water more than you need beer. You need more water more than you need soda. Matter of fact, if you drink soda, it's probably going to dehydrate you. Uh, we need protein. And we've talked before about, uh, you know, how do we... A lot of people out there are storing carbohydrates, right? It's easy to store carbohydrates. You store up wheat, you store up rice, you know, any kind of grains or whatever, canned food. And if you look at canned food, if you look at the nutritional value of a lot of these canned meals, it's almost all carbs. It's almost all carbohydrates. Now, yes, your body does need that for energy, but your body also needs protein and fat. And of all the things that are hardest to long-term store, fat's probably the number one, and then protein's are right behind that. One of the things you can do is there is shelf-stable milk. I put a picture of it up on my uh, Facebook today. Uh, it's it's shelf-stable milk, and the shelf-stable milk, if you buy the whole milk, which you should be buying, stop. I'm going to throw this out there. Stop depriving your body of the necessary fat. Start, stop starving your body of good fats. I don't give one fat rat's rear end what some psycho vegan on TV tells you. Your brain, you are a human being, you're listening to me, your brain needs good fat to function properly. That's why vegans are lunatics, because they starve their bodies of animal fat. The way that God designed you and built you, your brain needs animal fat to function properly. And your body, your muscles, need protein to rebuild. You're not going to rebuild muscles with freaking rice and, and wheat and whatever. So... One of the ways to do that, uh, I checked the, the shelf-stable milk uh, that we have. And by shelf-stable, I mean it doesn't have to be in a refrigerator. You can stick it on a shelf, 
and it's good for like six months, right? That has uh, eight grams of protein per serving. And it also has vitamin D, it has vitamin A, and it has fat. Okay, so that is one thing you can do. Uh, another thing you can do for long-term store protein storage is powdered milk, but you need to you need to when you buy it, take a close look at what you're buying and check the nutritional facts on it. See how much protein is in it, um, and then the other thing you can do is just store whey whey protein. You, I mean, whey protein that's powdered in a container will stay good on a shelf for a long, long time. Not forever, but a pretty long time. Now, the, obviously, the benefit of the shelf-stable milk is it's ready to go. It's kind of like an MRE. You don't have to add anything to an MRE. Just rip it open, start eating it. Right? And with the shelf-stable milk, same thing. Just open the container, pour it into a cup, drink it. With the powdered milk, you're obviously going to have to use your water. Your, yeah, and same thing with the whey protein. You're going to have to use your water to mix it up. Uh, that may be fine. You're like, I don't care. I've got plenty of water. I'll just mix it up. No big deal. Uh, and Or you may say, well, but what if you're – I got a, a good one for you. What if you are the team leader for your community, right? And you realize that there is a family close by that's living hand-to-mouth, paycheck-to-paycheck, or they're not even living paycheck to paycheck anymore because thanks to the Democrat Party and the planned pandemic, the dad's out of work and has been for six months. And they're scraping by. And they've got kids. Wouldn't it be awesome if you could just, like, take this shelf-stable milk to them and say, here, there you go. And you say, but it doesn't taste as good as fresh milk. Okay. Okay. Uh, if, if you need, if you need kids to drink it, <laughs> if you need to make your kids drink it, uh, yeah, shelf stable milk doesn't taste as good as fresh milk. Sorry. Nestle's quick, man. Or seriously, man, seriously. Um, if, if you, if you got kids, you need the kids to have the protein, the fat and, and the nutrition from the milk. Kids need it. They're growing. There's no doubt about it. So. Be smart and buy one of them Nestle quick powder things and stick it on the shelf uh, or whatever. You know, you can you can also do the the um, Hershey's chocolate syrup thing, you know, where you squirt it in there and stir it up. Uh, but those are those are three ways that you can make sure that in your emergency and survival uh, plan that you have both animal fat uh, and protein to ingest because you're not going to be a fully functioning creature if you think you're just going to eat handfuls of rice you're like ah, i got 100 pounds of rice oh, i'll last forever you eat eat white rice three meals a day for a week and tell me how you're feeling first of all you're, you're not going to be you're not going to be a happy camper so uh rice is great but we don't just eat that you gotta you gotta think okay I need carbohydrates, yes, but I also need animal fat for my brain to function so that I can make good decisions. Um, and you, you know when people are going through starvation, when they're going through hunger, and they start making bad decisions? Well, why do you suppose that would be? Jared, why do you suppose that would be? Why do people make bad decisions when they're, when they're super hungry, when their bellies are empty? Because they don't have the thing that their brain needs to yeah they don't have the decision the, properly their brain needs the fuel man your brain needs the fuel so uh, stop listening to vegans and get some freaking animal fat some and, and whole milk whole milk is not your enemy i don't care what you were taught the lies that you were told by the by the freaking you know people who wanted to sell you corn oil and all that other crap um you, your body needs it especially during a crisis or an emergency when you're going to be working harder than you normally do and your body is going to be under more stress than it normally is. The only way or the best way to deal with that stress of the situation, the crisis, the disaster, the emergency is to give your body nutrition. It's to give your body nutrition, especially if you're not sleeping well. 
uh, everybody needs sleep, but if you're not sleeping well, the one way you can, you can help your body to deal with that is by getting a good amount of nutrition and eating ramen noodles. You're like, I got four cases of ramen noodles in my emergency cupboard. I'm good. Let's eat ramen noodles. Mm, okay. Think. Use your brain. Think. You have anything else to add to that? Um, yes. The If it's a long-term change, like if you're going to be, it, it, I don't know, six months, a year, more than a year, if this is what you plan on preparing for, then you've got to have a way, a, a means of producing the food that you're going to need. Storage is not the extreme long-term answer. Obviously, having a year of food would be fantastic stored that you can use. However, you're going to need to be able to produce that stuff as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, this is kind of where there's like in modern in the modern times in the way that most people live, it's difficult to um, figure out a way with the space that you have to produce the food that you need. However, it is possible. There's a book that I've been reading, and I can't remember the name of it, but it was essentially you could have a house and a all of the food that you need on about a quarter acre of land and there's obviously the house is smaller and then the the house is about uh, probably a fifth of the size of the garden and the pasture and all that other stuff mm -hmm. so um i haven't got to the portion yet in the book where it's talking about animals and how to raise them in such a small space because i know like a cow for instance needs more than a quarter acre to eat the food and produce the stuff that you would need so i'm interested to get to that portion but so far like with the vegetable gardens and the food that you can grow it's been pretty insightful on how to set up for instance um, raised garden beds how to set them up to maximize the space that you've got and obviously, if you're in the middle of Wyoming, like that is, and you have plenty of land around there, then it doesn't really matter. You've got a whole bunch of land. And um, but if you're in a city like I am, I'm on the in the suburbs of Salt Lake City. I've got about a quarter acre of land with my house on it, and uh, so I would need to be able to produce the stuff. And and that's another thing where. If you're able to produce vegetables, for instance, and then you've got a neighbor or somebody close to you that can produce uh, meat and milk and whatever, that's where your community comes and eggs. blends together. And eggs. and Well, chickens are easy. Um, I know of somebody. Uh, if you know what you're doing. Well, kind of. I know a friend of ours that forgot about the chickens for like two weeks and they went out there and they were fine. I'm like, how? how well, a, how do you forget, forget about chickens? About and, and B, uh, I'm surprised you're still alive. Yeah. Well, I mean, even people in, in poor third world countries have chickens. Mm -hmm. So you just let, they just let them run loose. And then, but uh, yeah, what Jared's saying is absolutely true. And if you right now, if you still are not in the mindset of, I need to change the, you need to change your, your thought process. You need to start thinking, not buying. You need to be thinking producing. Uh, because hard times are coming for this nation. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, and if you're 100% reliant on somebody else, you're like, I have all kinds of Republic credits. I can just buy and buy until you can't. And then what do you do? You can take your Republic credits and eat them, I guess. So, uh, yep. Francis. Get Francis prepared. Joseph on Facebook says portable raised garden beds. Been using them for six years now. Yep. Uh, Francis, can you post a picture up in the comments of your portable raised garden beds? All right. Let's uh, while while that's happening, let's go ahead and thank our sponsors. In in addition to Brownells, and you should go to Brownells and sign up for their newsletter, or text. Is it five five six two two three to brn, or text brn to five five six two two three. Yes. Is that it? Uh, I think that's a number. It's not readily readily available on brandalls.com. Mm. So you can just do that. Duracoat, because life is... Too short to have an ugly gun. You know it. I know it. We all know it. Life's too short to have an ugly gun. Oh, here it is. Yeah. BRN to 556-223. Yep. So go to uh, DuracoatFirearmFinishes.com and shop around to your heart's delight. 
Uh, SWAT fuel uh, got hard bone by the scumbag Democrats in our country uh, and the planned pandemic to enslave us, but they still have nine millimeter plus P. You can go to SWATfuel.com, use the promo code SOTG and get some plus P energy formula. All right, every Wednesday, Zach reminds you of a, well, a good thing, something that you should do, and today is no different. So play that. ShopSOTG.com is the perfect place to go if you are a student of the gun. Whether you want to expand your brain, increase your marksmanship, or help keep your family safe. All that, plus the pimp hand brands that you love. ShopSOTG.com has almost anything that an American patriot would want education, enlightenment, and entertainment, and we're open 24-7. Check out ShopSOTG.com today and see for yourself. Well, there you go. There you go. All right. So let's go ahead and move right into directly into our student of the gun homeroom of the week, and it's brought to you by our good buddies at Crossbreed Holsters. Yeah. Down, down, da, do, 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 do. Bam. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. All right. So uh, that was Dangerous by Madison Rising, the theme song for Student of the Gun Homeroom. All right. Question, question, question. All right. Well, before we do that, if you want to get yourself a good holster, a good belt, a good mag pouch, a chest rig, whatever from Crossbreed Holsters, that's awesome. You should do that. And while you're there, use the promotional code SOTG18. That's how they know that their ad revenue is working. What? Yes. So let those guys know that you heard them on Student of the Gun. All right. What is more important today, toys or training? You're like, uh, this is a gun. It's not a toy. I need to make an announcement for those of Uh-oh. you that are listening live. If you're listening to this post uh, uh, from in a podcast format, uh, it's probably over. But crossbreedholsters.com, 72 hours only, get 40% off of overstock holsters. So if you're in need of a holster, go to crossbreedholsters.com right now. Uh, I don't know if the SOTG18 code will work with that, but try it anyway. You might get more than 40% off. That would be crazy. That would be yeah. That'd be like stealing from them, and I don't want it. I don't want it to steal from them, but uh, because they're good people, they're good people, and they they got their family business. They got families to feed. So, uh, all right. So check those guys out. Crossbreedholsters I I saw. I, I see this all the time. I saw. I see. I see and saw. Somebody's like, "Oh, I need more guns. I need to buy more guns or more." I was like, "Pump the brakes, Sparky." At some point in time. You need to ask yourself, do, and I know this is going to come as a crazy thought, but do I have enough stuff? And how is my training, how's my skill level compared to the stuff that I own? Someone once said to me, and this is a long time ago, um, if you are serious about being an armed citizen, if you are serious about protecting yourself and your family and your loved ones with a firearm, you should have as many certificates from training schools as you do guns. <laughs> this is when people were like, yeah, exactly, exactly. If you have one training certificate, and 47 toys, you probably have some misplaced priorities, Jack. Hey, I was, I've been shooting ever since I was knee high to a grasshopper and I know what I'm doing. Okay, great. That's a wonderful story you're telling me. Here's the reality of the fact. First of all, you should be taking regular training to keep yourself refreshed. Every professional, everything, whether it's a doctor, lawyer, nurses, EMTs, Plumbers, electricians, computer technologists, air, airplane mechanics, everybody who engages in a, pro- a profession of some type goes through regular update training. They do. They do. They go through, you know, police officers, 
you know, are constantly going through more training. You're like, why would they do that? They went to the academy and went to the academy in 94. What? I learned everything I need to know. Doctors, well, I went to went through medical school in 82. I know everything I need to know. No, no, you don't. You need refresher training. It's extremely important to get refresher training, to get training. If you are a new gun owner, and I know there are many of you in my audience, and you have not engaged in professional training yet, and professional training is under the watchful eye and tutelage of an instructor. Professional training is not you and your friends going to the range with 100 rounds and shooting at cardboard paper or milk jugs. That is not professional training, okay? So rather than taking 100 rounds out to a garbage pit and shooting at milk jugs, take that 100 rounds, add another 100 to it, and go to a training class, and you'll be well served. You'll be better served by doing that than just buying more stuff. And that that is the that is the uh, the conundrum. That is the the default of modern man. Oh, uh, I, I I see a perceived problem. How am I going to solve this perceived problem? I'm going to buy more things. I'm going to buy more things. No. At some point in time, you need to take the things that you bought and actually go to training so that you can learn the, to do. See that thing hanging on the wall behind me. Mm -hmm. see that that white thing that's a jackson guitar all right i have a couple of guitars i play the guitars and i practice with the guitars and i don't i'm not just a guitar collector now what i could do is instead of doing that imagine imagine if you will jared somebody that doesn't practice or learn how to play the guitar they don't actually sit at the feet of a master and learn they just keep buying stuff they're a collector. Collecting is fun. Don't get me wrong. Everybody's got to have hobbies. But if you're looking at that object, if you're looking at that firearm and saying, I'm going to someday potentially use that to save the lives of my children, just buying stuff is not going to give you that. When you, when you make that face that you're making right now, Jared, mm -hmm. you look like a young Jack Carr really yeah <laughs> that's funny because <laughs> there's a picture of jack carr that we shared on our student of the official student of the gun facebook page and, and he, he kind of had that exact face that you were just making right there <laughs> that's that's the trying to read the computer screen <laughs> if you're ever wondering why he's making that face maybe that's why who knows he's reading the monitor he's like what does that say? All right. I should put my glasses on, but I'm just going to look at the monitor. I'm going to look intently at the monitor anyway. So ladies and gentlemen, that, you know, you're like, oh, come on, Paul. You're trying to make me, you're trying to make me do things. You're trying to make me improve myself. You're trying to trick me into getting training. You're right. You called me out. You, you got me. You got me. Uh, I saw a proverb recently. This isn't a proverb from Solomon. It's a totally different proverb, but it's a it's a proverb nonetheless. And it goes something like this, and I think that it applies. It says, coddling weakness does not create strength. Excuses do not bring results. I thought that was worth sharing. So uh, if you want to write that down, coddling weakness does not create strength. Excuses do not bring results. Excuses are easy. Yeah. Everybody's got them. They're free. They cost nothing. That's why everybody has them, because they cost nothing. And results cost something. Results cost, they, you know, they, they, the price of results is effort and sweat and commitment. And if you put in the sweat and the effort and the commitment, then you get these things called results. What? Can't I just buy results? I have, I have 40,000 Republic credits. Can I buy some results? Can I purchase some strength with my Republic credits? I can't. Nope. You cannot purchase strength with Republic credits. So ladies and gentlemen, that is the lesson for today. That is the lesson for the, uh, the homeroom. 
at some point in time, you need to say, okay, I've got enough stuff. I have enough toys. I have enough objects. Now it is time for me to get serious and get training. And if you are a brand new gun owner, if you're one of the millions of brand new gun owners in America, now you own an object. Awesome sauce. You own an object. Cool. That's like saying, well, I bought a car. Now I can drive it, right? Mm -hmm. No, I didn't. I bought a guitar. Now I'm a rock star. No. Buying a guitar doesn't make you a rock star. Buying a handgun doesn't make you proficient and give you the ability to use it in a life or death situation. Mortal Kombat. All right. So what we're going to do. Uh, because I'm excited about this and I want you to be excited about it. And I want you to share it with your friends and I want other people to know. Uh, we're going to give you another teaser, another Legion of Michael podcast teaser. This is a brand new program from us to you. So the next thing you hear is going to be, well, the Legion of Michael teaser. Yep. And this one's talking about our foundation being strong foundation. like a rock. All right, boys, are there any questions we need to answer before we go? I'm checking right now. All right. Uh, to answer my question, Francis Joseph posted a picture of his portable raised garden beds, and they are straw bales. Oh, cool. It's actually kind of a cool idea, and he's looking for a picture. The one that he sent has nothing growing out of it, so he's looking for a picture of stuff growing out of it. Because that's a cool idea. I am not seeing so any questions. Joe, do you see any questions? Um, nope, I don't see any on that page. Let me check this one. So I'm going to, I just checked the discord. If you're not in the discord, go to soonerthegun.com slash discord. And, uh, then you'll be able to join the public server. All right. All right. Well, if we don't have any questions, that means I did a good job and I explained everything good in job. detail in detail. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for the public shows this week. We've got a grad program tomorrow, a grad program bonus hour for you guys. Until then, remember, you're a beginner once, a student for life. We appreciate your reviews. If you haven't left a review or updated yours recently, head on over to Facebook, iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, or your favorite podcast player to voice your opinion. Don't forget to join us at The Student Lounge, a place for like-minded individuals to learn, connect, and support each other. No chicanery will be tolerated. Remember to check studentofthegun.com daily for new free content and giveaways. Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at studentofthegun.com. Are you a social butterfly? Connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for new content each and every day at Student of the Gun. Watch Student of the Gun TV and videos from our trusted partners on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Chromecast, and even AirPlay. Go to studentofthegun.com for direct links, and remember, you're a beginner once, a student for life.